hello. Greetings, honored guests. You don't seem like frogs. Wow, how very astute. Nonetheless, welcome to Rainsong Pond. May your legs be limber. Tell me about the competition. As you have seen and heard, this contest is to decide if the frog who's best at jumping. Our contestants go through the qualifiers, group matches, and elimination matches, and only those who make it through all these can reach the finals. That, uh, sounds kind of complicated. It's not complicated at all. Simply step into the arena and clear the challenges that lie before you. Dear guests, if it suits your fancy, you can also try out the bouncing contest here. This is meant to test the com contestant's speed and stability while jumping. I have neither of those things. I wish it's about to do some practice here then take part in the next contest. But my skills aren't exactly up to par. I can't jump well enough on my own. Would you two be willing to assist me? So there's no competition ongoing here? Of course, the competition's already reached the finals, so the other venues are now open for practice. Keep practicing, keep jumping, keep competing. That's the way you get better and better. Come on, dear guests. You'll enjoy the bouncing contest too, I guarantee it. <laughs> okay. Come over here first. Okay. Oh, that's what you meant. Sorry, I misinterpreted. Okie dokie. Off you go. Whip. You're practically touching it. We're almost there. Oh. Oh, I see. We keep going. There's a thingy over yonder way. Somewhere over here. Actually, it's not too bad. I think it's even covering the mark. Anyway, okay. We're going on to the lily pad. Yeah, actually, my, my, my marking wasn't too up far off the mark. You've got this little excited frog. Did we make it? Heh, <laughs> this game is pretty fun, don't you think? Pama wants to give it a try too. Then be my guest. Pama can pose as if she's jumping in the air too, you know. It's pretty much the same anyway, and I can just kick you along the path. Sounds great. I knew you'd enjoy the bouncing contest, but just now, that was just a game. This is a long way off from a real contest. Only the very best of us can take part in the ladder. And so this contest will decide who is best suited to rescue the princess. Ah, it's just so exciting. I'm sorry to guess. My apologies. I just can't help but ramble on about far or bear. Can you tell me about the princess? Actually, I'm quite intrigued. After all, the whole reason we've organized so many con contests was to choose the paper frog with the steadiest, furthest, most awe-inspiring jump so they can go rescue the princess. There's still some time before the final match begins, so feel free to take a look around. Horalu will use his booming voice to remind us when the competition is about to begin. So listen out for it and make sure you find good seats. Okay. This is peculiar. Anyway, we're going over here somewhere. Huh? Huh? Hmm. Hmm. It's oh, it's there. Wait, what is next to me? Not something nefarious that's going to attack me. Jesus Christ, and scare me like that. So is the princess up there? Uh, okay. I'll go talk to you in a sec. I'm just, you know, checking out the place. It's allowed, right? <laughs> checking out the venue. Kind of reaching Land's End over here. Fine, coming back. Ooh, what's over here? Yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah, it's back to you guys. Okay, we've come full circle. Oh, I had no stamina. I was like, why the hell did you just plummet? That that does make sense. Hello, calm paper frog. Welcome, dear guests. I presume you are also here to watch the competition. 
Welcome, in any case, to Rain Song Pond. You've come at the right time, but also perhaps the wrong one. The competition is coming to a close, but only the final, the result of which is already beyond doubt, left to take place. I'm sure you've heard of Farah Bear and Estampe. They are both leading exponents in the art of jumping, but in my experience, Farah Bear is sure to win. I don't know, he seems to be having performance anxiety at the moment. Farah Bear is far better at this than all the other paper frogs and has won countless championships as a result. He is, therefore, the undisputed favourite. I'm going to assume that Estampe is going to win. He has the strongest legs, the most agile mind, the most resolute spirit. Most importantly, he constantly seeks to share his know-how with all other frogs. Okay, you espouse his uh, attributes, but what about Estampe's? Estampe is, like me, one of the paper frogs who learned by watching him. We respect, trust, and believe that he will once again achieve great success. Before the final begins, I'd like to stay and practice a little longer to prepare for the next round of competitions. If you do not mind, we could practice together. Perhaps you might even come up with some good ideas to help me jump all the better. So after choosing the paper frog, who will save the princess? Dot, dot, dot. Will you still organize these contests? Of course, this is not just about rescuing the princess. Most importantly is the contest itself and what it teaches us. Self-belief, resolve, bravery. Only a paper frog who understands and embodies such virtues will emerge as our champion. Come then, dear guests. <laughs> Let's see if you can feel the vi virtue inherent in our contest. I don't know. Jumping from lily pad to lily pad when you were a paper over water doesn't sound the greatest... Observe his attempts. Sweet baby Jesus. Uh. Lower the water spout. I don't get it. I'm, I'm, I'm saying to lower the water spout, but nothing happens. How, have the lotus leaf avoid... I don't understand. Oh. Right. Sure. That made sense. Not bad. You're quite good at this. If you have time, I'd be willing to recommend you to the organizing committee. The next time we hold this competition, we'll be able to measure ourselves against one another. Still, I shan't take up more of your time then. The final is about to begin. He he. Guess we'll just have to see how good this Pharaoh Bear guy is. He'll blow your socks off for sure. I don't know that either of us are wearing any. Still, he do. I mean, I am. Because it's fucking winter. But I don't think either of those two are. He did seem a bit nervous when I saw him recently. He was constantly practicing the most basic moves. And they're getting annoyed at how he was performing them. Look, it's called performance anxiety. It's called stress of having expectations placed upon you. What do they actually call it? Um, high performance anxiety. I had that during high school. Uh, but these are the finals. It's normal to get nervous, right? Yeah, these are the finals. A bit of nerves are to be expected. Eh. Yeah, but mm, that's what I thought. But no, I still believe in him. He's not the type of frog to give in so easily. I've got to keep practicing myself. If you'd like to guess, please feel free to have a look around. The finals are about to begin though, so be sure you don't miss them. I think I've kind of done most things here. And if I haven't done it, then I've just missed it. Actually, I saw another challenge. Where did it go? And here it comes. Sorry, here it is. Here it comes. My fine hind-legged ladies and gentlemen, the unparalleled Vora Bear steps forward to make his leap. And he, he jumped three lotus leaves and fell into the water. It seems we have a champion. The one who will work on our princess is Estampe. Congratulations to our... No, Mr. Horolo, I protest. This is ridiculous. Absurd even. I shall not accept the title of champion in this manner. Goodness gracious, by the morning dew. Come now, you surpassed Fire Bear in front of all frog kind. Fire Bear slipped up, that's all. He's just not in good form, you know. That will not convince me nor any other paper frogs. Anyway, let's give Fire Bear a moment to compose uh, to himself. Hmm, we'll have to continue this later. It seems we have guests. We're short of frog. Welcome, welcome to Rainsong Pond. What can I help you with? Um, what's this competition about? As you can see, it is a jumping contest. Only the most legendary leaper may take the crown, thus earning the greater burden of rescuing the princess. This is why we organize so many contests. I imagine that you saw the frog who just made his leap. That was Forabear, one of our contestants, and the greatest jumper in all the pond. Or used to be, anyway. Huh, sounds pretty cool. Shame we seem to have missed it all, though. 
Otherwise we'd have taken part. Well, shame. You'd have done... Well, no. Really? Pam has never seen you jump that far before. Except when you, when you, except when you were running away from monsters. It's the taking part that counts, Paimon. You never know. We might get a prize for participating. Hey, why is the reward always the first thing on your mind? Ha ha ha. In that case, you'd do well to ask our champion over here for some advice. My apologies, dear guests. And Mr. Horlow, too. But I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm no champion. But as surely as the Lotus them stand, according to the rules, you are the champion. I'll be the judge of that, thank you very much. This contest is meant to pick the best of us, the most skilled of jumpers, to go save our princess. This is a matter of the honour of all frog kind. And Farrow Bear is the very best of us, you know this, all of us do. So Farrow Bear was really that impressive? Sounds like he's peaked and is uh, on the other side of his gra uh, glory. Oh, right, we've heard a lot of other paper frogs talking about him. Is everything they say about him true? That's right, Farrow Bear is, was the best frog in our pond. He could easily bound all the way across 12 lotus leaves and land on the 13th, and he landed so lightly that the dew upon the leaf would not be disturbed. He could even jump between lotus leaves amidst a flowing river and not fall into the water, no matter how fierce the current. But we just saw him, so I'm guessing he's not in a good form right now. Yeah, he seems kind of down. He looked super sad when he was leaving just now too. He's just having a temporary rough patch. That's the only reason he made that mistake. Please, Mr. Horalu, for the sake of the contest and the sake of our calling, I'd like to ask for a rematch. If you deem it necessary, you can consult the opinion of all the other frogs. I am sure they'll concur. Listen, Estampe, I know you're a capital fellow, sharp-minded and upstanding to boot. But did you not see how far about was faring? He left without even attempting to make another leap. I'll speak with him. We've trained together all this time, so I know how he feels. He'll understand. Ah, for the love of Lotus Leaves and Lucent Dew. All right, I'll go with you to meet Farrow Bear. We're coming along too. We're uh, really good at encouraging people. And we're great jumpers too. Eh? Have you been secretly training behind Paman's back or something? I'm just good at making others jump. A long way away. Ha ha ha. Both humorous and polite. Thank you for your goodwill. In that case, let us go together. With any luck, that good humor of yours might soothe his sore spirit. Pond protect us. I wonder which will serve us better. The soft or hard approach. Why can't they both just go save the princess? Why does it have to be one or the other? <laughs> How do I get up there exactly? She cannot climb that. Ah. I see it. Okay, so that's not where the princess is then. Hello? Sheesh. Incoming. Sorry, I thought it would carry me the distance. It didn't. Huh? So then where is the princess located? Where are you rescuing her from? Well, this is unfortunate. Oh, I can totally just walk. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> He's here. Ah, oh, there you are. The award ceremony is over then. Just the opposite, in fact. Both Mr. Horolu and I are of the opinion that things are far from over. Indeed, I hereby announce in my capacity as referee that you, Mr. Farrow Bear, have one more chance to jump. To maintain the fairness of this competition and to fulfill our duty to the calling, you must do a re-jump. To Mr. Horolu, I, as a contestant, cite the competition rules pertaining to competitive behaviour that may bring harm to oneself and one's tribe. I forfeit my second jump attempt. I do not want to disappoint everyone again, nor bring ruin to our calling. This is the only truly responsible course of action. Wow, what a professional answer. He even had the specific courses handy. He even gave it a touch of emotion emotional appeal. All right, looks like playing hardball isn't going to work. I lucid you and Lotus Sleeves, but you haven't left the venue. I don't understand what you mean to say, dear guest. This is the best place from which to watch the competition unfold. If you really wanted to give up, you wouldn't have stayed here. That's true. You can see everything that's going on in the long-distance jumping contest from here. 
If he really had given up and no longer wanted to have anything to do with the contest, why would he stay? I don't wish to talk about this anymore. I believe I've been clear. Sorry, Estampe, and our two guests as well. Okay, he's a bit of a moody frog. He didn't even wait for Pama to finish speaking to hop away. Hold the fire bear, for the pond's sake, guy. I have an idea. Okay, what's made you into a morose motherfucker? So tiring. Listen to us, would you? Is there anything else I can help you with, dear guests? You saw the terrible state I was in. I admit, I mostly knew what you were going to say the moment I saw you arriving with that stumpy. My answer is no, and so it will always be. Look at my ankles. They are not ankles that can carry such a heavy burden. Not ones that can save a princess. They look like pretty sturdy ankles to me. A finer pair of ankles I have never seen. Ooh, scandalous. Y yeah, Paimon hasn't either. But I made a mistake. No, I have been making mistakes all along. I'm sorry, you two, but I cannot continue competing. Cool, you're gonna make me climb back up now, aren't you? Son of a... Oh, he's not. We're going around, we're going huh? around. This is great. Yeah. Hey, don't go. We just wanted to tell you one thing, one last thing. All frogs make mistakes. They just need to learn from them, that's all. See, I don't know that I necessarily agree with what we're doing here. Let's take professional swimmers, uh, for example. It's the closest human adjacent I have. So you only have the capacity to swim at top level swimming till you hit about a certain age. And then your body, you know, your body isn't quite as good as it used to be. You're not as fast as you used to be. You're not as fast, I don't mean as, not as strong. You're just not as fast as you used to be. So you have to retire from professional swimming. And, you know, it's, it's accepted. You can only be a professional athlete for a small period of your life because the body just isn't as fast at age 30 as it is when you're like 20. It's just facts of, you know, biology. So this frog, a water bear, could very well be past his prime. He's been good all this time. He's inspired a lot of other frog jumpers, frog leapers. But he himself has reached the, 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 the boundary, the upper level of, of jumping where he's he's over the hill he's not at the top of his game anymore and he never will be because he's just getting too old or whatever reason we're going to give it in the game so i don't know that it's very kind to in that circumstance be encouraging somebody like hey you know you got this just think of how well you've done in the past and you know everyone makes mistakes you can do it how terrible would that be to say to somebody who knows no, I cannot do it. I physically am no longer capable of doing this thing. Stop telling me to do it. It's just degrading. I can't do it. Let me retire. Obviously, this is going to end well and he's going to succeed and he's going to go save the goddamn princess. But just you got to think about this from other perspectives. And I don't appreciate that we're forcing this. Good guest. You do not understand. I, I initially believed that mistakes were mere drops of dew that fall upon our heads. Nothing that could truly knock a froggy down. But I was wrong. Perhaps they were never mere drops, but rather more akin to rocks at the bottom of a pond, withered wood stuck into the waterbed, or a vent hidden within the muck. We can overlook them, bury them, step over them, or pretend they don't exist. But they will not rest, my friend. They will all wait their opportunity for a chance to come back to bite you. Please go, and let me go too. I am nothing but a mere lotus head who has had all its seeds removed. Even He's being very metaphoric. I really don't know what he's trying to say. Even a light breeze would surge through the many holes in my heart and chill me to the bone. I cannot take up this great burden. This is the voice of my heart. I have let all frogs down, including myself. You still have a retry, you know. Yeah, you've got another chance to prove yourself. I do not wish to taste the bitter pang of failure once more. My legs and my heart cannot. Whoa, this lotus leaf is moving all of a sudden. What's going on? What? But it should have been fixed in place. No, it's moving forward. Please stand firm, dear guests. I will steer it as best I can. How do you steer a lotus leaf? Uh, control the water spouts and prevent the lotus leaf from being hit. How do I control the water spouts? Watch out for the water pillars. Lotus leaf won't withstand the impact. We're gaining speed! Speed! 
This has got to be the end. What a close call. Good thing. Something rather. I've trained here before, so I'm pretty used to it. Wait, those two frogs on the shore. Are they horror loot? Ah! I was reading! Looks like we won't be able to reach the shore for now. I can't control it. Oh my word. I'm gonna capsize. Does it matter? It's just water. These frogs don't seem to care. I mean, he was literally in water two seconds ago. Oh, hello. But he missed his jump. I can do this. I can take it. Leave it to me, everyone, and hold tight. Okay. I'm gonna have a cliff. We've got to jump. Jump. I won't make it. He's very wet. Is he all soggy now? <laughs> Would you look at that? Farabad the unyielding. Farabad the bold. He sees the opportunity for a retry and... <gasps> a spectacular leap. Spectacular indeed. This is a miracle. Without precedent. He is the only paper frog ever to leap across this precipice. I knew you had it in you, Farabad. I believed in you. The lotus leaf that suddenly started moving. That was your doing, wasn't it? I'm sure you didn't say that quite so accusatorily, but <laughs> that's how I envision it. It was something that Mr. Horolu and I came up with together. I apologize, dear guests, for hiding this from you. I mean, my life wasn't in danger. It was certainly exciting. All right then, Forabear. Now that everyone has witnessed your great leap, you no longer have any reason to reject the victor's crown. Oh my god, could you just take his, his wishes into consideration? You're being very overbearing. But it was a coincidence, a miracle born of circumstances, just one, one fluke leap. It was only with the aid of these two guests that I was able to do it at all. I'll be honest, we were just having fun drifting alongside you. Exactly, we were just watching from the sidelines. That big jump was all you. Yeah, I mean, yes, but the traveler was ahead of him with her glide. Think of it like running long distance running and you have paces you have someone who is faster than you who runs ahead of you to keep you going because you want to keep pace with that person so that encourages you to go faster so the traveler had already leapt out and was gliding to the rock ahead of Farah Bear. so he had the courage and you know the strength to match what she was doing in that circumstance so it probably was a good leap because he knew that someone else was going to make it and therefore he knew that he had to make it. It's a very sp specific type of situation. Still, that work wasn't in vain, right? He, he. It would have been a waste to stand by and watch such a brilliant frog give up like that. You love it so much and you train so hard for so long. It would have been awful if you'd just given up. A tragedy for you and frog kind. I'm glad you didn't actually give up. I wish that everybody had just let you do what you wanted to do, quite frankly. Ah, oh, honored guests, truly your hearts are purer than the first drop of morning dew. I am sorry, my friend, to have done you such an injustice. You should have been the winner of that match. Oh, come now. You proved that you were the best of us, did you not? Please listen to me. We have many competitions ahead of us, and I will gladly compete with you a hundred, a thousand times more. But this time, we must put our best frog forward to fetch the princess. How often does this poor princess get fetched? That is our calling, and the future of Rainsong Pond rests upon it. As such, there is no room for error. Do you understand me? I do. Good Farah Bear. That's wonderful. Ha ha ha. Well, this all seems to have turned out great. We have ourselves a real champion now, don't we? Next up, our champion shall go rescue the princess, and then our calling will be complete. Uh, not to interrupt or anything, uh, about that princess of yours. Yes, yeah, so, uh, you said a whole bunch about this princess of yours. Fetch her this, best frog that. Now everything's ready. Do you actually know where the princess is? Ha <laughs> of course. We are about to go and receive and rescue her. For she lives in a tower made of vines and giant trees. Only the bravest, boldest, most jumpiest of frogs may evade the thorns and deep mist, leaping atop the tower to deliver the princess from her cage. Seems like a lot of pressure to be putting on someone. I'll definitely fall down halfway. Come now, Fire Bear. Don't be in such a rush to return to the pond. Why, we have yet to even lay eyes upon that tree. Our hard work has paid off. We have located the tower. It is in the kingdom of Bell Breezes and Bells. Um, Mr. Horley, there is naught there but forest and flying squirrel. Certainly not a high tower. Are you certain that is our destination? 
Absolutely. I personally went to inspect that place. The tower there is so high that you can barely see the top. There are none, I reckon, who might scale it, apart from us paper frogs. That sounds really impressive. Uh, let me take a look first, and let's meet in the kingdom. You're coming along too? That would be wonderful. Ha ha ha, looks like we've got quite the crowd for our little princess welcoming party. Not bad, not bad at all. How do you know the princess even needs rescuing? Think about that. See, I knew those things would work out for the best. Let us make our preparations and set forth for the kingdom of breezes and bells. As for you, dear guests, we shall see you there. Ah oh, yes, Mr. Farabear, please go to the award ceremony first, would you? It wouldn't take place at the pond. No. Why is he saying no? That was weird. Ah, uh, huh, huh. Hmm. Okay. Bear with me. I will make my way up there. Ah, uh, what's the best way up? I think this way. Uh, and then just straight up. I don't know. There's a bloody tree in the way. No, that is definitely not it. There we go. How tall is it? Oh, fudge tickles. The trees. Huh, <sighs> if only this was Wuwa. This would be much quicker. Is it? It is over there. That's what I thought. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, I could have just gone on the. Wow. Wow, really? Oh. Oh, is that the one I was looking at? I thought there's one up here. Whatever, we'll come back. Let me just go get this. And then we'll take the jumpy things up. Like you're supposed to in the first place. Oh, jumpies go up there as well. Why does it go over there? Ah, it's not on the rock. Oh, that's the direction of the next kingdom. Look, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, which one? Don't know. Oh, we didn't go. Over oh no, no, that's the tavern. Sorry, nobody go over there. Alrighty, back we go. Oh, there's no one over here. Before we go gallivanting off that way. what they do. It is a mystery to me. Do you guys need help? Or you, you Gucci? Yep. Yeah, they're good. Alright. Let's go become a jumping master. This is definitely not my forte. Weird that we only played with one alpaca. Oh, okay, never mind. We found a second oh, alpaca. Dear Citrus. Oh, this is Almond. Please tell me you're joking. We can't have you out of commission with the tavern about to reopen. I'm sorry, Grandpa Almond. It's the truth. I was just too excited for the reopening and must have fallen asleep in an awkward position. Totally sounds like, um... <gasps> oh no, Beto. Grandpa Almond, we're here to help! Oh, hazelnuts on high. You could not have come at a better time. Uh, please allow me to introduce you. This is the bartender of the Calligraphy Tavern, Miss Citrus. She's so tall. Uh, Miss Citrus is supposed to add all kinds of delicious fruits to the magic tonic. Her additions are what turn it into the finest brew in the land. <laughs> She's indispensable to the operation of the tavern. What's this button? Oh, okay. Um, no, I need subtitles. I appreciate the kind words, Grandpa Almond, but... Oh, my neck. Why do these alpacas all have issues with their necks? Are you all right? Ah, uh, terrible timing. Getting a kink in my neck at a time like this? If it's not Beto's voice actors, then it's, it's Dia's. They have very similar voices. Could you give my tail a little twist? That should help free up the movement in my neck. 
I would do it myself, but I can't reach my own, and Grandpa Almond is too old and as light as a feather. The neck and tail are connected? It's no different to the frogs. The tail and... You know, they don't have tails, but the tail and their legs are connected. Of course they're connected. Just like how you can't have a rainbow without rain. <clears throat> anyway, you just need to position me at the right height to pick the fruits. And then put them in the barrel over there. Okay. I don't think you need to go up. I think down's fine. Oh, good grief. Thank God it's not timed. Oh my God, how many do you bloody need? Mm, this doesn't seem quite right. Bite me, alpaca. Miss Citrus. No, my rewards. Perfect. <sighs> my neck feels much better. So there really is some kind of connection between your neck and tail. Thank you so much, everyone. I can rest easy now, knowing the drinks at the tavern will be just as wonderful as before. That's another problem solved. Yay. Return to the hut of blessings. <laughs> For you. 